Oh, okay. So um, we are going to talk about JavaScript functions today. I, I didn't even know I was still muted. Sorry about that. Okay, so in today's class, we are going to look at arrow functions. We are going to look at anonymous functions. And we are also going to look at callback function, right? And then um, we are going to look at how to declare default parameters in a function. And then we are also going to look at the return statement. Okay, so um, after we, we know that this is what we are going to do today. So let's start already. Uh, let me reshare my screen. Um, just give me some moments. Let me reshare my screen. So we'll go to VS Code. And then we'll start. Okay. We are finally here. And uh, I think this this is the last thing we did, right? I think this is where we stopped. Okay, so let me just delete this part. And our last class we talked about loops and all this stuff, right? We talked about loops. Uh, um, we talked about while loop. We talked about the while loop. We talked about um for loop, right? Mm -hmm. So who can maybe talk a bit on uh who can talk a bit on uh loops, right? What we discussed in our last class about loops. Who can try to maybe summarize what we did in our last class? Someone should try. Anybody? Nobody saying anything. Everybody's quiet. Nobody wants to try. I hope you guys can hear me clearly. Okay, so in the absence of anybody trying, we talked about loops, right? We talked about uh do while loop, we talked about while loop, we talked about um for loop, right? And um, we saw the different use cases for them right and uh, i made a key i i, I said something key about the differences between uh while loop and uh do while loop so can anybody try can anybody try to uh, um recall or like explain what i said was the difference between a while loop and a do while loop Nobody. Wait. No, this is not this is not happening. Uh Sophia, uh Promise, uh Lukman, um Felix. Uh who else? So what nobody can tell me the difference. Nobody is even saying anything. No, nope. someone should try. I'll call names so look man, try. What did I say in the last class about the difference between a while loop and a do while loop? Look man. Lukman Oladokun, I'm referring to you. Were you in the last class? Lukman. Okay, all right. So, in that case, you guys don't want to talk. Uh, there's no issues. So let's continue. Uh, we talked about uh functions, right? And we said that. A function can be uh, declared by using its name. A function is just a, a piece of code, a callable code, right? That you can 
a dereference at any time of your any time you want to. So maybe I for me to write a function out, say function, then the name of the function could be um maybe greet. And then uh the greet function we can then say here console.log um maybe hello. Hello guys. And then down here you can say greet that way or greet nine. What what I think that's a mistake. So I, I wanted to call it greet. I'll just say greet. And of course, if I launch, if I uh, run that code, you'd see that we have so to run it, I'll say node script.js and then we'll see hello guys. Short and simple, right? Also, we can call this function multiple times, even if we declare it only once, right? So if I decide to call greet twice, here and here, I call it to have hello guys, hello guys. So, okay, so this is a basic function and a, a function can contain multiple statements in it, right? Now, Functions can accept parameters, and um, parameters are just a simple way of you passing properties or maybe functions or data to a function to use to work with, right? So I could then I could just say, um, I could say, okay, I could call this name. Maybe I would say name, and here I might want to say hello, comma then the name being passed in there. So now this name is acting as a parameter, right? So I can use this parameter to do whatever I want to do inside my function. Now, if I call name, name is going to, if I call this function, right? Name is going to be undefined. So if I call it, we have hello undefined. Okay, then if I call this with an argument, let's say uh, James, and here we have John. We call that, we we'll see simply that we have hello James, hello John. Okay, that's simple. So I've passed the parameter and I'm using that parameter for the function. Okay, simple. Now, how do we handle cases where there is no parameter being passed to the function? Like maybe there's no parameter. Maybe you want, you want it that if James is being passed to this function, it should say hello James. But if James is not being passed, then it should maybe say hello guest. So what you can do in this function is you can then declare this as a default. You can declare guest as a default parameter. So how do you declare it? You now say name should be equals to guest. All right. So guest now becomes a default parameter. So if the name parameter is missing, what you would have in the place of uh, the name is going to be guest. So let me clear this and run it again. Of course, if I run it, you'd see that first we have hello James, and then second, we now have hello guest for the second uh, implementation there. Okay. Now, another thing we can do is we can, we can return things from our function. So this function here, can have, for example, I could say, instead of just logging this out, I want to get this value, maybe to use it to do whatever I want to do, right? So this function name is named greet, and I want to, instead of console.logging, hello, and then the name, I might want to return, I might want to return the value, hello, then plus, the name okay so of course if i run it now it's not going to show anything because this function is not printing out the name rather it is just doing something it's, it's just concatenating hello with the name and returning it so how do i get the value of name i could say something like const greet greet one should be equals to greet and I could also say 
equals great to uh, equals to great. So what I'm saying here is when when this function returns a value, I want to save that value as grid one, right? And then the second time I'm calling the function, I want to save what the function is going to return as grid two. Of course, I can console log the value of grid one and grid two. So I could say grid one there and uh, grid two. Of course, if I run this, you're going to see hello James at first and then hello guest. Okay, so there's no space in between both of them. So I just have to put that space. If we run it now, you'll see hello James first. The second time you're going to see hello guest. So that's how this works. That's how functions work, right? Function accept parameters. Parameters are optional. A function can either return a value or not, depending on how you want to implement it. What's your what's your purpose of implementing the function? If you're implementing a function and you want that function to log out things to the user, fine. If you want it to return something to you, fine. It's still okay. All right. So let's look at uh callback functions because callback functions. Okay. Let's let's look at uh um arrow functions. So how can I convert this to an arrow function? An arrow function is by default already. Yeah. I hear me. Um sorry to interrupt you. Please can you explain the logic behind for passing a parameter in here? Okay. I just I you what? I didn't get you. I said I said I've been waiting for I did not can hear you clearly. Okay. I said I've been following, but I didn't understand you. The explanation. Okay, all right. So what I'm what I'm saying here, what I did here was I passed a param. Let me remove this first, right? I passed a parameter called name to the function. Now that function, right, is going to get that name value. Right when so when you're declaring a function, you pass a parameter to that function. Now, when you're calling that function, you pass an argument to that function. So this James here is the argument, right? But when you're declaring the function, you, you say that the first um, parameter that's passed to that function, right? Or this the first argument that is passed to that function will be saved as the parameter called name. So automatically. This first argument here maps to this parameter called name. Do you understand? Yes, it's it clear. Okay, so if if I said maybe name and age, I could say maybe name comma age, and maybe I could say James here when I'm calling it, and I could say comma maybe twenty, right? So I could say hello. Hello, my name is James. Uh, then I could say something like this. Uh, and I am age years old. So if I do that, what I'm simply saying is this, this should accept two parameters, name and age. So when I'm calling this function, James is going to be mapped to the uh, parameter name. 20 as this argument will be mapped to the parameter age. This, this is automatic, okay? So if I clear this and uh, I run that again, of course, this second one doesn't have any parameter. So we are seeing um, name as undefined and age as undefined. But in the first one, you see, my name is James and I'm 20 years old. Have I answered your question? Um, yes, uh, thank you. Um, but also, can we have a variable? Like, is it possible to have a variable? Um, we have variable, variable name where? and variable h. Then we just call it as a parameter inside the function. Okay, so you mean declaring the parameter inside the function? 
No, like we have a variable outside the function. However, we are declaring it as a parameter inside the function. Is, is there anything like that? Yes. So you can do this. You can see const um maybe my name. My name should be equals to sorry, const my name should be equals to uh, Victor and maybe const my age. My age should be maybe 22. So then here, yeah, let me remove this other one, right? Let me remove grid two. So we can then say something like, like this. We can pass my name here, comma, my age. Then if we call it, of course, you still see that it works perfectly well. Hello, my name is Victor and I'm 22 years old. So it works perfectly well. Did I answer your question? Okay, okay, sir. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, so let's go back to the loop question. I guess you people are, your ears are now here. So I was asking the difference between while loop and do while loop. Can anybody try and explain that? Can anybody try? Please, can you come again with your question? I said, what's the difference between while loop and do while loop? Did you guys get it? I didn't get the question. No. You said different what? between while loop. Yes, and do and while loop. Oh. I don't know. So nobody knows. I mean, I don't really know much, much. I can't really see. Oh, I think the definition is in the names, right? Like for the while loop, it runs the command inside of the curly braces while, um, you know, the I would, I would say argument passing is true, right? So while that condition is true, it does something. But do, right, do runs, it's almost the same thing, but it runs the commands while something is true. So do while, it's like combined together, do this while maybe i equals to two, it runs the command inside of um, the two, something like that. Okay, love it. I'll send you Zobo. Okay, so she has an idea in the question, right? So while loop runs only if the condition that is given to it is true. Of course, you guys remember that a while loop, while loop actually checks for condition before it even runs. So if that condition is false, it won't even run like at all. But if the condition is true, then that loop will run until the condition becomes false. Now, a do while loop is going to first run the block of code before checking if the condition is true or false. If the condition is false, it must have run that code at least once already. Do you get? It would have least, at least have run that, that condition or that um, statement at least once so even if even if the the condition is true so even if the condition is false right for a do while loop right the, the condition you're checking is false it would run that particular loop at least once so that's the main difference between both of them okay so let's continue so i talked about default parameters right now default parameters usually come last in when you are trying to declare your um your parameters, right? So I can't come here and say name now should be equals to I can't come here and say name should be equals to a, maybe a default parameter. Then age will just remain like this, right? This always happens to this. So if I want name to have a default parameter, then it means name will have to come first before the age, right? 
Or if I want both of them to have a default parameter here, then fine, both of them can have a default parameter. But in this case now, age can be the one to have a default parameter. I could say maybe age is, should be zero, right? So this means if I just supply only name and I don't supply age, age will be taken as zero. But if I supply age, age will be replaced, right? So I can make two of them shall have their yeah, default value. I can say uh, name should be equals to guess and age should be equals to zero. Short and simple. Hello, my name is this and my age is that years old. So if I clear that and come back here, you see, hello, my name is Victor and my age is 22. Oh, and I'm 22 years old, sorry. So um, that's the basics for a function. Anybody wants to ask a question again based on functions? Or should I explain again? Nobody's saying anything. Yes, sir, please. For my sake, please come again, sir. Let me explain again. Okay. All right. So I'll, I think I'll just start with uh, the introduction. Now, a function is just a callable um, block of code that's a named and a named and a callable block of code. Uh, let's not say a name because some functions don't have names, right? Anonymous functions. But a function is just simply a callable block of code. So you can call now a function. The way we are doing it now, we are calling it by actually calling the function. A function can be called by maybe an event. For example, maybe if you click on a button, I can maybe pair this function with the button. When you click on that button, it triggers the function. I could pair a function with um uh with maybe a swipe um a swipe event, right? I could pair it with an enter event. I can I can make this function to run maybe as soon as a web page is loaded fully, right? Or there's even what is called cron jobs. So cron jobs run uh functions, right? Maybe at regular intervals. I can say every this function should run at after every 20, 20 minutes, or after every one, one hour, or after every three days, or once in a day, or every 12 o'clock every day. So I can break my function into different parts, right? So what people do now is maybe they can have a login function, they can have logout function, they can have view profile function, they can have all these things. The way you click on login, the login will now take your your um, maybe username and password and it does some things, maybe send it to uh, a, a back end or so. Even, at, or even on the back end, right? When a request comes to the back end, right? A function, right, which is usually called a request handler is going to get that request and then handle it so you you do you would work with functions more now functions accept parameters right so what parameters are like properties or um data right you can supply data or functions you can supply to if a a, a function a function can actually accept a function as an argument so here we are just using a string as name and an integer as age a function can also be passed to another function as a parameter, okay? And that's what I, want, I wanted to actually move into. But then someone is not following. So I'll just go through this again for the last time. Now, functions are declared before they are called. So this is me declaring this function. So I'm saying grit is the name of a function. Grit is going to accept two arguments, name and age. Now, inside this block of code that you're seeing here, from here, these two curly braces, anything I want to do, right, here, when once I call grit, this grit here is going to execute what?
that's whatever is inside this sketch. I can have grid, I can have does it make sense to you? Does it make sense? Uh I just hope you're listening. Are you listening? Yeah, yes, I can hear you. It's like your network break like few minutes ago. So we couldn't hear you. Okay, all right. So I hope I they are the only that I'm explaining this to. I hope he's listening to it because I can't even hear any feedback from him. But then a function a function can accept arguments, right? It can accept more than two arguments, it can accept five arguments, ten arguments, right? And then you can use the values of the, those arguments to do whatever you want to do inside that function, short and simple. That's how functions are, right? And functions can return a value, okay? So you can give a function. So now, take function your function to be a messenger, right? You tell your messenger, go and buy something for me or go and do this. The messenger is supposed to come back with the result of what you send it right so that's how a function can be used as a messenger in a way so you 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 can declare a function to do something maybe to process a data or um change something right and then you get the result of what that function is doing and then you decide to i can now of course you know that this great one is this hello my name is um then the name and all the stuff I can take this grid one and pass it to another function. In fact, that's what I just did here. I took the result of this function and I'm passing that result to console.log. Console.log on its own is another function again that I'm passing grid one to. So I'm saying, I'm calling grid one. When grid one returns a value, oh, sorry, I'm, cut, I'm calling grid as a function. When grid returns a value, I want to save that value as grid one, right? And then I want to pass that the, the that grid one value to console.log so I can then see it log out. I can decide that, okay, this should be passed to another function entirely. I can write another function to do something else with the result of the first function. Does it make sense to you guys? I hope it makes sense to you. So Adewale, Oh, sorry, I would, I would daily, sorry. I hope you, you follow. Okay, so um, I'm not getting any feedback from him. I think he actually understands. If you don't, you can rewatch the video. Definitely, you can do that. Now, let's move into a... A, a bit more complex um topic so let's let's go into callback functions but before going into callback functions let's talk, let's talk about anonymous functions and um, arrow functions right i i talked about it in the last class but then let me just recap now an anonymous function is a function that doesn't have a name of its own okay so look at this when we when we um so let me delete something so imagine a function like this this function is nameless right but then i can assign it a value i can assign it to a variable so instead of me okay don't worry so i could just do this i could say grit should be equals to that function so now the function is like kind of a variable Right, so variables can also contain functions, not just data types like strings, numbers, arrays, objects, boolean, all the stuff. No, it can also a a a variable can also contain a function, as we can see. And of course, if I if I um, execute this, you see, hello, my name is Victor, and my and I am twenty two years old. Short and simple, right? Now. This can also be changed. This function can also now. This is an anonymous function, but this function is is assigned to a variable, so it still acts as a traditional function because whatever is whatever you've done here is sent back to be stored on grid here as a variable, and then what you're just saying here is that variable, right? When that function when being called the uh, results should also still be stored here again, and then you now log it out. 
Now I can convert this to an arrow function. So I think I should do it from scratch so that everybody would follow. So if I want to convert it to an arrow function, I would say cons greet should be equals to now I'll put two two parentheses space then equals to then greater than symbol Okay, so um, sorry about that. Let's continue. Okay, so you guys can still see my screen. Okay, so I, I was saying that I can then paste this in here and still achieve the same result that I had. So if I clear my console and I come back here and run the, the function again, you'd see that it still works perfectly well, right? So you can decide to use normal functions, right? You guys, you can decide to uh, follow this pattern to make the function anonymous and assign it to a variable. You can use anonymous functions. Now, sorry, you can use arrow functions. Now, arrow functions don't at any point have a name. You can't do this. You can't say, maybe you can't say something like grit like this and put space. It, it won't work. That's wrong. So it's always going to be a function being assigned to a variable. And then you're using that variable to do whatever I want to do. Makes sense. I hope it makes sense to everybody. Okay. Now let's, let's talk about anonymous functions. Oh, uh, sorry, callback functions, okay? Uh, I remember that when we talked about uh, arrays, maybe I'd say const students, students should be equals to um, joy, James, um, Sorry, Joy, James, maybe Peter and Paul. Peter, Paul. Uh, then we want to look through it. We can say students dot for each, right? Um, students for each. Then inside here, we now write a function. Maybe I could say function and then in here I could just say value or whatever I want to call it. What did I do? Value. Then in here I can then say maybe console.log console.log uh, Maybe my name, my name is then uh, value, V A L U E, value. Of course, we already we know what this is going to print out already now. We know that it's going to print out my name is Joy, my name is Peter, and, and the rest. Now, here's the thing what did we write inside here? Right? We wrote an anonymous function. 
which is also a callback function. So what is a callback function? A callback function is a function passed to another function as a parameter. Okay. If you didn't get that, I'll say it again. A callback function is a function passed to another function as a parameter. Okay, so look at this. For each is a function, right? For each is a function. In fact, let me remove this uh, the callback function in there. Sorry. Yeah, let me remove that. Look at for each innocent function there. What we are passing a function into for each. Okay, so now this function we are passing into for each is the function called a callback function. And what does a callback what does a callback function um do? Now, if you um let's say uh you want to process maybe an information right and then you want to give it to uh you want to allow the user to declare his own function to get your processed information and then act on it you can design a callback function to use okay let's let's you let's look at this for each for example what does this for each do internally if we if we should ask ourselves what does this for each what what do, what does it um execute internally so this for each now loops through the array right but as it's looping through the array each value or each element in that array it then passes that element to this function as a value as as this parameter value so when this runs first when this for each runs first the value of this parameter named value right is going to be joy if this runs when this uh, for each runs the second time the value for the parameter named value is going to be james and so on and so forth right now i can write my own uh my own function that accept an anonymous function to do something okay so here we've just seen that we've just used an anonymous function right and we've been able to do something but how can we write our own anonymous function oh sorry we used a callback function a function that accepts a callback function so let's write our own and see now i'm going to write a function that should um reverse the um reverse its pass to it so this is what i can do i can say uh, uh I can say string. String should be equals to maybe Victor. Uh, uh, I can name it string. I'd rather say um. Okay, let me rather do this. Let me remove it. This is what I'll do. How can I write my own anonymous and um, my own callback function? I'll say this. Function reverse string. Reverse string, right? And I'll take the str. That's the string. And I'll take a callback function. I'll just name that callback function fn. So this is what I'm going to do. I'll reverse the string being passed here. And I'm going to give it back to the user to use to do whatever it wants to do. I know that some people might not be following, but anyways, I would explain what I am about to do. I'll then say REV should be equals to um, str dot split split dot join dot reverse dot join and of course now instead of returning 
instead of returning uh, the REV value, what I'll simply do is I'll then say FM and I'll say REV. So what have what have I done here? What I've simply done here is I've said when you call reverse string, that reverse string should accept a string and it should accept a function. So that function is that function, the first parameter of that function is going to be the result of reversing this string. Okay, so I could then say reverse string and I could then say the string I want to reverse. So this first parameter is going to be mapped to this str here. So I'd say the first parameter, which is what I want to reverse, maybe Victor. Then I'll then say the function. So the function is going to be me writing my own function here, telling it that the first value there, right, would be the name or the result. I could just call it result. Then I could then say, I can do whatever I want to do. I can say, um, I want to console.log. I want to console.log the results. I could say, I could then, I could say this, I'll say the results is, and then we'll see, let me run that code now. Okay, so we see that it's, it reverses my name, right? Or it reverses the name passed to it. So it gives me the, the result in reverse, right? So how do I get, if I wanted to show the result of reversing Victor is, and that, what I'll simply do is, since the first value here is REV, I can then say maybe REV comma, and then maybe STR, or anyway, maybe the other way around. So I could do this here, and then here I could say re re result, and I would say maybe initial string. So this would be me saying here that the results, um, the results of reversing. Then in here, I'll then write initial string is that result. So now what, what is happening here? What is happening? Let me run the code. So the result of reversing Victor is R-O-T-C-I-V. So what is happening here? I passed if a, a string here and a function Right. Okay. When declaring this this uh, first function, I I say this function should accept a string and a callback. I can name this whatever I want to name it. It doesn't matter. Even if I want to name it, maybe callback. But make sure that if I'm naming callback, where I'm going to use it as a function, I should also name it callback that way. So I accept a string and a callback in this function. You know what I'm saying? I first pick the string and reverse it. Then after reversing it, I pass the value of that reverse string to this callback function. And I'm not only passing that value, I'm also passing the initial string, which is str, how it was before. I'm passing it as, as um, a value to my callback. Then this is me using the callback here. I'm saying Victor. So this Victor here is going to be mapped to this string. While well, this callback is going to be mapped to this function. So now, what this gives me the power to do is, I can call a, I can call a string and then use that value, right? Maybe use the result of, I can call a, um, a function and then use the result of that function directly to do something else, right? So this is like saying, after working on this string, give it to the user right, in a function and allow the user to do whatever I want to do with that string or, or with the with the arguments of that function. 
Okay. So. Someone is saying, why is mine having error? Okay. Uh, well, we'll uh, attend to that after the class, right? So just keep your question. We'll attend to this after the class. Okay. So what, so what we just did here is simple, right? I think I would have to explain it again. I'm calling this function as a normal, as a normal way, like the way I should call it. I'm, pa I'm also passing these two parameters. So I'm passing Victor as the string and I'm passing this function as the callback. Then where this function is declared, I'm saying maybe reverse the value of string and save it as REV. Pass the reversed string and the initial string before it was reversed to this callback function. Now, this gives the user, right? The user of this reverse string, the power to pass, maybe to pass a string and then get the result and initial string and do whatever I want to do with it inside that same uh, uh, um, parameter for the parent function. So now, this here, this function here you're seeing is my callback function. I can do whatever I, I, I want to do inside this function, right? So does anybody have a question? Or does everybody understand this topic? Um. Okay, sir. So my, my question is, so by passing the uh, the thing Victor. Now, when we call the function, the initial string parameter that we have it automatically takes the Victor, right? Which yes, this 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 str here automatically takes Victor. Yes. Continue. Okay, sir. So. How does the initial string or where does it come from? See it here. So now this result here maps to REV, which is being passed to this callback, while the initial string maps to this one, this str here. Does it make sense to you now? Does it make sense? Yeah, so this callback here is, is this second parameter we are passing here. So what we've done so far is we've passed, we've passed a string and a function as parameter to the reverse string uh, function, right? And then we see it in action, right? Now you can, you can pass in, you can decide that maybe your your own function can accept like maybe three parameters, right? I can even make it that this function should accept, if uh, this uh, reverse string function should accept a callback function first before uh, maybe a string or any other parameter, okay? So I can do that, but I think this is the simplest form of it and how like, if I if I try to do that, maybe some you might get a bit confused about what I would change. But looking at this, right, does it make sense to everybody? Does anybody understand? Uh, does anybody find it confusing to understand how callbacks work? Um, hello, sir. Yeah. Hello. Uh, I, um, I got the first part. But the other part, that means the, the callback, they give us, when you call that function, I don't which understand the other part. Which which one? The, you know you know the first function, the reverse thing. Yes. When you called it in the other part of the code. Mm -hmm. I don't understand that part. Where I called it here. Yes yes. Yeah, that so block of code I don't understand. This particular block of code here. Yes. 
Okay. So, of course, you know, when you declare a function, you call it Nabi. Yes. And so this is me declaring a function here. This is declaring a function, right? And this is me calling that function. Okay. So now what happens is this is this is like a little bit similar to how for each was written. But now the thing is for each came with JavaScript. So you are not seeing the implementation. What you're just doing is you're using it. But now this is me trying to define my own anonymous function. I'm saying, okay, this is how I want this function to be. And this is how I want it to run. Okay. So how do I want it to run? Reverse string. Uh, so what I'm saying here is this should accept a string. You should accept a callback or whatever I want to call this. Right, so this it accepts two parameters. If you look at this function very well, this reverse string function, when I call it, it's accepting two parameters too. It's accepting Victor as the first parameter, then it's accepting this function as the second parameter. Okay, does it make sense now? Yes, it is making sense. Uh -huh. So it is just the same thing. It's just that this for this second parameter is not just a string or a boolean or number. The second parameter I'm passing there now is a function. That's just the difference. So that function now can also have its own parameters. Like so, what what I'm saying here is the, the what I'm saying here is um this function here is expecting two parameters, right? Now here when this function is called, right? Okay, see what see what happens when reverse string is called, right? After when this first line of code is executed to reverse the string. What next is called is this callback. So this callback, right, is given the reversed string and the initial string before it was reversed. So now I can do whatever. I can decide that I want to just use only the reverse string, which will be result. So now result is mapped to this reverse string. Initial string here is mapped to this str. Okay. If I decide to interchange them, maybe I instead of writing REV and STR, and I write STR and REV. You would see the results. The result would be the result of reversing T O R like R O T C I V is Victor. So it would actually now want to do the reverse. So you see, right? So I'm saying. So what 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 am I saying here? I'm saying string and reverse so now this reverse is going to be mapped to this initial string and then this result is now going to be mapped here so what i can do now is maybe i can then interchange these two also i'll say result should be there initial string should be here so initial string is going to be str rev here which is the result of reversing the string is going to be this result so if we run it now it's, everything will go back to normal again the result of reversing initial string, which is Victor. Remember, initial string is the first parameter of the reverse string, which is still passed as the first parameter to the callback. Then the second parameter to the callback is the reversed string, which is REV, which is what you have here. Can any... Does anybody have... This is clear now, sir. Thank you. Okay, it's clear now. Yes, sir. Okay. All right. Uh, sir, so... please, I, I have a question. Okay, ask your question. Okay. Please, can you use a live question to explain this better? Because I'm trying so hard to understand it. Okay. Um, a live example. Right, let me see. Mm, what would be a live example? All right, so let's see, let's see, let's see. What are the things I might want to do as a programmer to a piece of data? Okay, 
let me say I have an array of um an array of strings, right? And I want to make a sentence from each of those strings, right? And then pass it to the user back. Let's say um okay, let me do this. So instead of reverse string, I'll write a function. Okay, I'll write the function to uh, tell me if a number from, okay, it's going to tell me, um, it's going to return an array to tell me if some numbers are even or some numbers are odd. This is what I'll do. Maybe function, uh, oh, sorry, function, and the function name would be uh, is even. Or odd. So I would say this function. So now what I want to do is I want to pass in um, a like set of numbers to this function. And then the function should tell me if all the numbers are or it like each if each of the numbers is even or if each of the number is odd. Now it's going to return an array and it's going to tell me, it's going to show me the number and um if is even is true or false. Okay, so I'll just say um num array. Then I'll have my callback function here. So I'll just say maybe I'll call it C B for short. Okay, then in here, what I want to do is I'll then say for for um for let I equals to zero. I should be less than uh num array dot length i plus plus. So what, what I want to do now is uh, then now I will need a place to store the results of whatever I'm doing so that I can then send it to the callback function. So of course I could say something like this. I could say let results let result equals to an empty array. Then here what I can then say is uh if num array at i Uh, divided by two is equals to zero. Of course, this means that number is an odd number, right? So I can then maybe do array. Oh, sorry, result dot push, and then the result dot push. I'll then say, uh, maybe value. The value could be um oh, sorry the value would be the num array at i and then I would say is even should be true and else if that's not true right then I'll then say else that is even should be false. Now, after doing this, the next thing I want to do is I want to give that call back the result of all I'm doing. So what I'm doing now is is going to create what what I'm doing now is I'm accepting a number array that is an array of numbers. Then I want to look through those that are an uh, array of numbers, and I want to check if uh if a value divided by two has a remainder or has doesn't have a remainder it means that it's an even number right then i want to push uh the, that number and then it's even to be true then if it's an odd number of course i'll push the number and it's even to be false as an object so at the end of the day i could have a call back here and then that call back can accept a result
Okay, that callback can then accept the results. Then what we can do here is we can then say, for me to now use this function, I'll now say is even or odd. So I'll call that. Then here, of course, what do you want to pass? An array. One, two, oh, sorry. One, two, maybe six, maybe eight, maybe 12, 13, uh, 14, 16, 16. Yes. Then the next thing I want to pass in is the callback function. So I'd say function. Of course, this callback function just accepts the results, right? Results. I could just call this VAL here. Yeah or value or whatever I want to call it. So I don't want to do anything to the result. I just want to console.log it. I'll just say console.log. Maybe I'll just say uh, the result is, the result is, then I'll then say result. Okay, now let me clear my console and let me run this again. Okay, what is it saying? It's saying result is not defined. That's because I used val here instead of result. So I'd say val. So if I run this, of course, you what do we see? Can you guys see my screen? It's 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 uh showing that value one is value one, which is the number one, right? It's even is false. One is is not an even number. Two is an even number. Six is an even number. Eight is an even number. Twelve is an even number. But thirteen is not an even number, right? Fourteen and sixteen are even numbers, right? So instead of instead of me doing this, maybe instead of me saying, maybe if I didn't if I didn't want to use callback, this is what I would then want to do. I would then remove this is even or odd. I would then say maybe, uh, uh, const results or const value VAL should be equals to is even or odd then I'll then pass then last last I want to come and say console.log console.log VAL imagine so if I do this, it will still give me uh okay, I'm not returning anything, so sorry. So it still shows me the same thing, right? Or similar similar thing, but now instead of getting the return value externally and like getting it as a variable and then do about this is even or odd in the same uh, uh, function line that I'm calling it. So instead of instead of doing this, right, what I can simply do is I can convert this to the callback function. So converting it to a call, uh, maybe after norm array, I can then write cd call. Then of course converting this to a to a callback function, I'll say CB and then results. Then here, of course, I'll then say I want to have a function, which is the second argument here, right? I'll say I want to have a function, a function. Sorry. Uh the function should be an anonymous function, definitely, right? I can also use arrow functions here. Okay. In fact, let me use arrow functions here, an arrow function. I'll then say that, and then here I could say value. And of course, let me console.log, let me console.log, sorry, value. Do that, we see that we still have exactly the same result. So now this is like two different ways of doing the same thing, right? Now in programming, 
right? There's no one fixed way of solving an, a problem. It's just that one might be better than one, right? Maybe one might be faster than one, the other way of solving the problem, right? So, but there's also what is called best practice. So best practice is like what is popularly done, right? So most times you might want to rather declare a callback, right? To your, your function. So in, instead of using a return statement, you can use a callback, right? So what, what, what have I done here? I've written a function to check if each value in it is an even or odd number, and then you should push it into an array and you should um, give it to the next. So this is, uh -huh. uh, another way to explain this is like saying that uh, maybe you have a procedure to how you want to do things. So while calling is even or odd, when you pass a result here, this is like saying, call the next, or call uh, the next uh, 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 function there, which is this function, or which is this uh, callback, right? After doing whatever I want to do, you're calling, it's just like saying, uh, manipulate um, this value or this uh, argument. Then the result of this argument, send it to the next, or the next callback, or the callback in front of it. So um, that's how you can actually declare callbacks. Does it make sense to you guys? Or who is still confused? Nobody's confused. So everybody understands it. Maybe I'll ask that. Hello, sir. Yes. <laughs> A reward should do, um, maybe we'll watch and we'll understand it better. Wow. Okay. For now, okay. yes. It's... Okay. Ah. See, you have to rewatch this video. That's just the thing. You have to rewatch it. Okay. So, uh, in the absence of any question, you can try to write a callback function. In fact, I'll. I'm sure I'm going to give an assignment on this callback. I'll. So you have to learn how to write this, right? Because you even in Express, right? Because we are going to use Express to uh, um, write back end, right? In Express, you are going to work. You know how you 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 escape them. You're going to work with them, right? And then before you reach there, before we start using it, uh, uh, call those callback functions, right? You would already get familiar with how everything works. Okay. So uh, in the absence of any question or any uh, any other uh, maybe concern or question, right? We can call it a day here. Okay. So uh, thank you very much for uh, coming to today's class. I know we, 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 uh, we talked about functions today right and we also introduced a new topic which is like callback function if you didn't watch it uh, if you didn't understand it just try and watch the video again try and do what i'm doing uh and then you get it eventually right i didn't understand this uh when i was learning it right but i just had to keep doing it till i now understood how it works so you can also if i can yes, do it can I, then can I you can also do it Okay. I used I used to say they they were also confused that was going. Yeah, I don't give that to <laughs> you. say I didn't get you. <laughs> I said I used to be able to say they were also confused that so. You're cracking. Yeah. Okay, can you hear me now? Yes. Okay, I said I used to get to say they they all also did not get it as well. Yes, sure. So I, I find it hard to believe. get it at first, but you shouldn't stop trying to get it right. You would get it at last. So, what you should tell yourself is, I haven't understood callbacks yet. Add the yet there, yet, because 
It's not as if, if you don't understand it today, you will not understand it again. But you don't understand it yet. So after a little while of practicing it, you will understand it very well and be able to use it. Okay. So uh since we are done for this two, we are we are, we have uh okay, someone is saying something. Okay, so in the absence of uh, any other question, so I still have a question um in the chat. 